Welcome back to the channel, folks. In this century, we'll be taking a look at the High Evolutionary from Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 3. One of the more memorable villains in the often forgettable roster of the MCU, the High Evolutionary was a force of evil that we couldn't help but love to hate. An abhorrent antagonist with a delusional god complex playing out his ambition onto his experiments, one who caused untold misery and suffering across the vast scope of the galaxy. Just like his predecessor, Ego, the High Evolutionary bears a similarity in the general sense of imposing his idea of perfection onto the universe. But while Ego was enamored with himself and saw beauty only within, the High Evolutionary's perfectionism partly stems from an overcompensation for his own insecurities and flaws. It's not too long into the film that we're given an overview of the reputation that precedes the High Evolutionary. The fact that he is widely feared across the vastness of the galaxy and considered by some to be a god bears witness not only to the sheer might that he wields, but also to the notion of swift vengeance towards any and all who would defy him. This fearsome reputation is undoubtedly bolstered by the High Evolutionary's penchant for unholy experimentation in gruesome fashion, covering the span from genetic upgrades to cybernetic implants. The dreaded surgeon of the operating table, the High Evolutionary's pursuit of perfection has resulted in one too many abominations of nature, grotesque and chilling to behold. It would be fine if his operations were done to save lives or improve the lives of his subjects. That would at least make it worth the pain of the procedure. There is one exception in the case of Rocket, whom you could say has had some higher quality of life with his newfound intelligence. But in most of his surgeries, they're done without the consent of his subjects, and they suffer simply for his own selfish fulfillment. Even if they do survive, these subjects often live lives of misery, either being disfigured or left to starve and languish in cages. And should they fail to meet his impossible standard of perfection, they are mercilessly left to incinerate in an act of genocide. It's speculative as to the full scope behind the high evolutionary's perfectionist ways. Rocket makes an astute observation that his perfectionist ways are simply a facade to mask the all-consuming hatred he has for everything. But of course, the biggest hint comes at his own self-admission, when he mentions that he had to step in due to his perception of there being no God. At the same time, it can't be a coincidence that the high evolutionary's recurring goal is that of creating the perfect society, one free of crime and even distilled of hostile emotions like aggression, even to the point where he would destroy his work on counter-earth simply for a few misdemeanors. Therefore, it's suggestible that he suffered some severe mishap from the crimes of others, leading to his hardened conscience in the attempt to root out all traces of misconduct. As someone with a god complex would have, the high evolutionary has a misplaced sense of pride, which we get hints of in his disdain for something as simple as incorrect grammar, and by his haughty attitude in his power play with Peter, when he ungraciously ignores him and makes him wait in silence. It's also apparent in something as natural as his body language, by the way he holds Rocket's head as if it were simply an inanimate object. It's no surprise that the High Evolutionary would attempt to break the laws of nature in his attempt to play God, not just in terms of his experiments, but also for himself, by overcoming an ever-present natural constraint, that of gravity, which he triumphs over with his anti-gravity technology. His choice to weaponize this technology lends credence to his lofty attitude, allowing him to viciously fling his victims around like flies, as if they were abominable creatures only deserving of such inhumane treatment. In the justification of his disregard for the lives of his victims, a common theme is evident with the high evolutionary, the notion he puts forth that it's his right as their maker to destroy his creations. But this notion only serves to illustrate the level of delusion that has consumed him. 
He may have facilitated their conception and their development, but it's a far stretch to conclude that he is their creator in the full sense of the word. A mother may give birth to an offspring, but it's not exactly accurate to say that the mother created the child. That's just the natural phenomena when a seed meets an egg. In the high evolutionary's case, he has simply taken pre-existing genetic material and tweaked it according to his fashion. Genetic material that has its origin apart from and independent of him. Of course, in this universe, there are fictional forms of technology. But even then, we see that the high evolutionary is bound by the limitation that something naturally cannot be created out of nothing. So contrary to his proclamation, the high evolutionary has no claim on the lives of his subjects, and the fact that he believes so is what makes his mindset all the more appalling. His perfectionist attitude is also easily heavily misguided, as it defies a sound and irrefutable logic that something perfect cannot come from something imperfect. For all his talk on creating the perfect species, the high evolutionary himself is far from being flawless, and he himself is fully aware of it, which we see when he displays an insecurity over his relatively shorter height when he resorts to standing on a box to tower over the sovereign's leader. So at least in the aesthetic sense, the high evolutionary feels he has come up short, Apart from that, we hear in a conversation from his subordinates that the high evolutionary has been undergoing some form of treatment, implying a chronic state of disease. It's possible that this disease may have contributed to the final state of his face, along with the disfigurement from the debacle with Rocket. Either way, it's clear that the high evolutionary is far from the perfect standard he pursues, physically and also emotionally as evident by his frequent bouts of uncontrolled rage and irrational thinking, leading to an eventual loss of faith in his followers. A deluded villain always chasing an elusive dream, one bound to repeat the inevitable cycle of disappointment at the expense of those he deems beneath him, one who shows us that those with the loftiest ambitions are sometimes prone to the most wickedness.